Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. This is a day that the yes. Lord has made, Amen. and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. God is a good God, isn't he? Yes. And he's worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And we're so happy, amen, to be a part of this worship celebration here at the Thelon Baptist Church located at 4717 Augusta Road here in Garden City, Georgia. We praise the Lord for our ministerial staff. I was senior pastor, Pastor Harold Edwards, Minister Emmanuel Gray, Minister Victor Logan, and Minister Arnold Matthews. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Yes, Amen. And that's what we've come to do this morning, to praise and worship the name of the Lord. So in spite of what you're going through, in spite of how things are, amen, in spite of what situation you may be in, God is worthy to be praised. Yes. The scripture gives us to know yes. in everything, Jesus, Jesus. give thanks for it's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we praise him anyhow. We thank him anyhow. Yes. We glorify yes. him anyhow. Yes. We say yes. hallelujah you, anyhow. Amen. And I'm telling you, when you call on the name of Jesus, yes. amen, something happens. Do I have any witnesses here this morning? Yes. When you call on the name of Jesus, yes, God will come and see about you. Amen. Yes. He'll do you a favor. Yes. He'll touch you. Yes. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free. Yes. Amen. He'll make a way out of no way. He'll be that bridge over troubled waters. Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to, amen, be blessed, amen, through the song service on this morning by the grace of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Call on the name of Jesus. Prayer changes things. Children, when you pray, you ought to call his name. Children, when you pray, you ought to call his name. Children, when you pray, you ought to call his name. When you call the name of Jesus, prayer changes things. Children, when you pray, you ought to call his name. Children, when you pray, you ought to call his name. Well, a storm rolled and Jesus was fast asleep. You know Peter woke up, Jesus, he said, sir, what is your will? That's when Jesus got in the middle of the boat and said, oh, peace, be still. Children, when you pray, you ought to call his name. Children, when you pray, you ought to call his name. Changes things. Listen, Jesus and his disciples, they were sailing out at sea. Well, a storm rolled and Jesus was fast asleep. You know, Peter woke up. Jesus, he said, Sir, what is your will? That's when Jesus got in the middle of the boat and said, Oh, peace be still. Children, when you pray, you ought to call his name. Children, when you pray, you ought to call his name. 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 
Gotta call his name. Gotta call his name. Gotta call his name. Children, when you pray, you wanna call his name. Children, when you pray, you wanna call his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Call the name of Jesus. Yes. Because prayer. Yes, Lord. Thank prayer. you, God. Heal it. Prayer changes things. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. In the midst of calling his name. Amen. We have to learn how to take him with us everywhere we go. Hallelujah. No matter where you are, take Jesus with you. Glory to God. And we're living in a day and time where we need to do just that. Take him with us in the street, in the home, hallelujah, on the job, wherever we are. Amen. Let's not leave Jesus behind. Glory to God.
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The old song said, you're going to need them. You're going to need them everywhere you go. Take the Lord God with you everywhere you go. And when we take him with us, amen, we can praise him no matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstance is. Hallelujah. We can praise him and give him glory. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, God's people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, God's people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, God's people. Saying you love the Lord, you ought to clap your hands. If you say you love the Lord, you ought to stump your feet. If you say you love the Lord, Say amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Now this is a sing and do song. Amen. I'm sure we know about singing do songs. Amen. From school. So whatever the song says, that's what you're supposed to do. So even if you're in the church right here or you at home, let's do what the song says do. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you say you love the Lord, you ought to stand on your feet. I'm looking. If you say you love the Lord, you ought to clap your hands. Yes. If you say you love the Lord, Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. If he doesn't do anything else for us, he's already Already done more than enough. And for that, we give him glory. We're getting ready for the word of God. Amen. From the man of God. Let's prepare our hearts and minds. Amen. To receive what it is the Lord will say to us through the man of God. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, yes, Lord, I need thee. Bless me right now, my Savior. I come come to I I come to Thee, Lord. I come to Thee, Lord. trust in him and don't worry about what's to come but where I am right now amen so if we do what it is we think we ought to do it may not turn out the way it should but if we just put our trust in him and let him direct our paths at the end of the day we see that we have accomplished more than we thought that morning. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for watching over us while we slumber and slept. Lord, we know that all we have to do is put our trust in you. Lord, right now, I ask you to help me to decrease so that you may increase. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Lord, I ask that you anoint these lips of clay, that the words that come out will be as you would have them to be heard. Anoint the ears and the hearts of those that hear them, so they would hear and take in the words that you would have them to hear. Lord, I ask your blessings upon our pastor in his absence. 
associate ministers, Minister Gray and Minister Matthews, Lord, and this congregation, all in their respective places, Lord. Uh, bless the choir and musicians, Lord. Bless those that are sick and shut in. Those who had desire to be here, but for whatever reason, could not make it. Lord, we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And once again, we thank you that you gave your son, Jesus, that whoever shall call upon his name shall have life and life. COVID is out there. Amen. There are some that believe in it and some that don't. Those that don't sometimes find a rude awakening when it comes upon them. There are things out there in the world that, that, that are said and, and, and it's up to us to, to believe them or not. But we have to realize that we are in this world. And everything going on out there is really not for us. But if we just put our trust in God, we will see the truth as it comes apparent. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 1 through 10, and also the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. Second Corinthians 12. If you have it, would you please stand as we read? Amen. Chapter 12, verse 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up in paradise, and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for men to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself, I will not glory, but in my infirmity. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmity, mm -hmm. that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Oh, yes. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities, and persecutions, and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Philippians 4, verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound, Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul writing to Corinthians and telling him of his experiences. Sometimes when, 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 when God has done things for us, we want to let other people know, amen, how good God has been to us. But we have to be careful, lest other people think that we are boasting and that we think more of ourselves than we, than we ought to think, amen. 
sometimes we will say, well, God uh, did this for me. He brought me through this financial crisis. He brought me through this or that situation. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. But excessively doing, sometimes you have to, to uh, sometimes we forget to put God in the mix. Sometimes we say, I've been through this and that and I came through. Uh, I've done this and that and, and this is how it happened. I was down and out, but look at me today. Mm -hmm. and, and we get so used to telling the story, all, we leave out certain parts. Mm -hmm. We leave out the main part. Amen. So sometimes we have to realize that, that people ought to know, even though we know that it's God who did it, we have to let other people know. Yes. Just like when, when you get married, it, it, you know you're married, your spouse knows you're married, but what you, you wear a ring to let other people know you're married. Amen. Yes. When, when you come to Christ, it, it, you know that, that, that you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and, and your walk sometimes shows it, but sometimes you got to let other people know. That is God that got you through where you are today. It is God that brought you. Now, now, now God knows how we are sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, so what he did to Paul, Paul did a lot of things. He, he, he did a lot of miracles. He helped a lot of people. And, and people respected him. But uh, it, it, it might be seen that Paul said, lest, lest I boast, mm -hmm. God put a, a thorn yeah. in my side. Something to remind you where we at. In our lives and through our walk, God has placed a thorn sometimes to remind us that even though we are above other people or we've done more than we could have done on our own, he has to remind us that we only got where we are because of him. Yeah. The thorn may be uh, uh, you're dragging through a financial crisis that, that you know that, that you should be able to make it through but for some reason. It could be a, a, a child uh, uh, that's, that's giving you a problem no matter what you do it, it just constantly on you it could be a co-worker it, it could be anything mm -hmm. something that reminds you that you can't do it by yourself no. amen so whatever it is God gives us something to remember that even though we, we're doing this we can't do it without him amen. So, so when you find your weakness Whenever you're weak, you, you, it, it, it can foot hurt. And, and you're not walking right. You, you sometimes get a cane, right? Yes, you, you get do. something to lean on. Mm -hmm. When you're weak in that weakness, you, you, you have to lean on something that helps strengthen you. Yes. God is reminding us that in our weakness, we have to lean on him. Lean on. We have to lean on him because when we acknowledge that we can't do it without him, then now, since we're leaning on him, he strengthened us more than we would be if we were on our own. Yes. And through that strengthening, we find that we have accomplished more than we thought we could. Because sometimes we dwell on our weakness, I can't do that, it's hard. And you start doing that, and sometimes if, if you're toe hurt, you start walking and, and you get used to that, 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 that pain, and, and, and sometimes it throws your body out of way. But if you don't get something to lean on, if you don't recognize that it's a weakness and you just get used to it and living with it, no. But if you recognize that, that it's something that you can't handle and you put your faith and your trust in God, then he will strengthen you. Yes, he will. So that now that you're walking as you ought to walk, mm -hmm. now that you're doing the things that you ought to do, and you do them a lot better than you can do on your own, mm -hmm. amen, because you have some support, amen. Uh, Elder, you can probably, I, I see you got the sling there. Yes, if you sir. just did that without, your, your arm would probably be a little weaker. Mm -hmm. But now that you have some support, yes. it, it can get stronger yes. because you have support. Mm -hmm. Amen. The same thing with ours. Without these, these glasses, I can't see very well. Mm -hmm. I see up close, but, but not too far away. Mm -hmm. But I have that on. I recognize that I need help. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the things that we go through, we don't recognize uh, that we need help. Mm -hmm. We just think that that's the way things are. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's if, if this is that and that is whatever, I just, I just learn to deal with. Mm -hmm. But if we put our strength and our trust in God, if we get down on our knees and pray and let him guide us, we'll find out that he just put those very things in our way so that we are recognized that we need him to help him oh, make it through. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. Paul said he knew a man in Christ and, and some... Uh, uh, 
uh, people, uh, theologians, think that he's talking about himself. Okay, that he was caught up in the third heaven, but he don't know if he was actually transported there in body or his spirit was taken there. He doesn't know. Right. He just know what happened uh, when he was there. Amen. And, and, and he he seen things and he heard things that he cannot tell you about. It's unspeakable. It's not meant for him to tell you. But he was there. But he's saying, if, if I will not glory in the fact that I was caught up and that I was there, I will not think highly of myself and think that I'm special because God brought me up into heaven and showed me these things. Amen. Sometimes when, 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 when Jesus does things for us or we do a situation, we think ourselves special. The Lord uh, chose me to be the, 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 the pastor. He chose me to be the deacon. He chose me to be uh, 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 in the choir. Amen. Therefore, I must be better than other people. Not so. He used you for what he can use you for. And sometimes we have to be reminded. Sometimes he'll take that, 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 that voice away and you, you can't sing. And though whatever song you try to play, it just, it just ain't coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, he will remind you some kind of way that, that you are where you are because that's where he put you. Yeah. Some of us need a lot more reminded than others, amen? Some of us need to be reminded on a daily basis. And, and, and however, when we finally, God gets our attention and, and we step back and let him handle it. And then you can marvel at the things that God has done for you. Amen. Oh, yeah. and, and Paul says, rather than to boast about the things that God has done for me, I'm not going to boast. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity, the reproaches, the necessity, the persecution, the glory in, in, in the bad things that happen to you. Amen? Uh, so you wake up this morning and, and, you're, and you're hurting. The glory be the glory. You woke up at least, right? So, so you woke up and you went to work and, and they said you no longer work here. Amen? Do you cry? Do you fret? Do you worry about it? You say, to God be the glory because now because I'm not here anymore, maybe he has something else for me. You have to trust in him in your, in, in your darkest hour, in your, in your moment of weakness, in, in, in the things in your life that you can't deal with. You have to recognize that you can't. Sometimes things are in your path and you just try and try to overcome it. You try to fix it. And, and the more, the, the, the harder you try to fix it, the worse it gets. Until you just step back and recognize that I can't do this. But if it's for you to get done, God is trying to say, okay. Now you finally came to where I want you to be. Now you finally realize you can't. And now you're trying to find direction of where I want you to be because maybe where you're trying to be or trying to hold on to is not what God has for you. But he either has something else for you or he has a way for you to go further than it is you're trying to get, a different way to accomplish the same goal. So you have to recognize that when you are weak and you rely on God, that's when you're at your strongest. When you trust in him, when you leave it all on his doorstep, that's when things start to happen. Take a moment to look over your life. Take a moment to Inspect yourself. Let a man examine himself. Amen. Take a moment to, to look into your life to where things that, that, that you are trying to fix, but it's not for you to fix. Amen. Take a moment to realize that that thing you've been, you've been beating on and beating on it is not going to get any better because you're not using the right tool. Amen. You're using a, a big hammer where you might just need a screwdriver. Amen. But you don't know what you need until you ask somebody. Until you ask God what it is he really wants you to do. So sometimes you have to just sit back in your, and, 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 and listen. 
They tell us that we need to pray and pray often and pray without ceasing. But prayer is a conversation with God. And, and, and every people forget that there are two parts to a conversation. You talk and then you have to listen. Amen. A lot of us pray and tell God what we want and tell him and tell him and tell him and then they forget to just sit back and hear what it is he has to say. You have to sometimes listen, not sometimes, more often than we do. They say, listen to God. You, you ask him a question, but you don't take the time to hear the answer. God, what is it you have for me? What do you want me to do? I did this, I did that. I need you to do this. I'm going to, you, you, you're constantly talking. You need to just stop. When he said he gave you one mouth and two ears, he wants you to listen twice as much as he wants you to talk. That's my interpretation of it, amen? Uh, uh, some people just talk, 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 and talk, and don't, don't give people the time to get the word in edgewise. You have to pause. That's why, why in, in, in the English language they have punctuation marks. They have a period at the end of a sentence. Some people, you can't tell where the sentence is because they don't never take a pause. Don't even have a comma to pause a second to maybe let somebody get a word in edgewise. Sometimes we're talking so much to God, we don't pause to give him a time to get the word in edgewise. And then a lot of times when we're listening, we're just listening for him to pause so that we can say something. You ever have a conversation with somebody and, and they're just waiting for you to be quiet so they can say something instead of just listening to what you have to say? They're not listening. They're not listening to what you're saying. They're listening to when you stop talking so they can say something else. <coughs> we have to Learn to listen to everything. Not only hear what God is saying, but listen to what he's saying. Take it in. Take in the meaning of what it is he has to say. Realize that he has something for you. It could be in that, that, that whole sentence that he has something for you. You can slip in a word of conversation and say, well, if you do this, I'll give you $100 if you keep talking they never heard that one part because they just wait for you to stop and they never got the blessing that you was trying to give them. The part you just slipped in there. But if he was listening carefully to every word you heard, they would have caught it. And sometimes they, they, they will just catch the key things, amen? Sometimes we hear what we want to hear. When God tells us what we want to hear, we, we, we blot out everything else, amen? So we have to learn to listen carefully to what it is. Paul had this thorn in his side, and, and he, he had a great ministry, and he believed that if this thorn was taken from him, his ministry could even be greater. Now, it's not said what the thorn is, whether it was an infirmity, a sickness, a pain, or whatever it is, some stumbling block, but he asked the Lord three times to take it from him. Lord, can you take this pain from me? Have we, have we asked the Lord to take something out of our lives or just, just you know, just with us? And, and, and he won't. So if we ask him louder it's the next time. And we keep begging him and tell him, Lord, please. But then if we listen, he would have said, my grace is sufficient. Yes. I give you enough grace to, to deal with that pain and do what it is I have you to do. Don't worry about the stumbling block because it won't be a barrier to what I have for you. Amen. It won't be... It won't take away from the whole master plan. But that, that summer block is for you to realize that, that, that you can't go any further without me. Amen? God puts thorns in our side. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of us has something different. Oh, yeah. And some of us have it so long that we don't recognize it for what it is. Amen? So sometimes when we recognize it, then we just leave it up to God. And, and we don't forget about it, but we're now not trying to deal with it to the exclusion of all else. Now that we know God has that in hand, now we can focus on whatever else he has for us. Amen. His grace is sufficient. He's given you enough. You don't have to worry about that thorn. His grace is sufficient to do what it is he has for you to do. So now that you can take pleasure in the fact that you have an infirmity, and, but you can still do what you got to do. 
you have this weakness, but you can still function because you're not focused on the weakness, amen, or you're not so taken up in yourself that, that, that you don't realize that you have one. Because you left everything up to God. He takes, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distress for Christ's sake. Because when I'm weak, then I am strong. In Philippians, he said, now that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Have you ever heard somebody say, just be happy with what you got? There's some people that's trying to get what you got and, 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 and not realizing that you have what you need and be content. Not, not that you just can't aspire to something else, but sometimes where you at is where you need to be for that minute, moment. And by trying to strive and, 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 and to, to move on forward, you haven't mastered where you at. You know, sometimes they say to uh, some people, uh, kids are real smart because they wait till they skip a grade. Sometimes we're skipped ahead of where we need to be. We need to spend more time where we're at before we're pushed forward. And then we need to perfect where we're at. So sometimes God just needs us to be more fully aware and be more fully doing what it is he has us to do. Be content in where you are. I know both how to be a base, how to be humble. I know how to abound. I know how to, to act when I got a lot, when I got enough. Amen. I know uh, everywhere in all things I'm instructed to both be full and to be hungry, to both be abound and to suffer need. And I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yes. You can do all things. Not everything. Some things are not for you. But all things that you strive to do and all things that he wants you to do, you can do it through him. Amen? Yeah. It, it, it is hard to some, some people say, well, uh, I, uh, there's some things that you're not physically capable. And some people say, well, you just ain't trying hard enough. But everything is not for you to do. But when you ask God and you pray to him and, and you get his blessing and you get his understanding, uh, then he can allow you to do what it is he wants you to do. And when you realize it's not about you and everything going on in this world is not about you because you're here for a season. The 40 years, the 20 years, the 70 years, the 64 years that you're here, the 80 to 90 years that you're here is just but a brief span in time. Mm -hmm. And in all that time that you're here, maybe three or four years after you're gone, you may be forgotten. Mm -hmm. But it's important that you are here and you do what it is that Christ had you to do because if you have done what it is he has for you, it has far-reaching consequences. You affected more than you know. You affected more people. You affected generations. You've had grandchildren. You have people at work. You have other people that you come in contact with. Uh, if you want to see how many lives a person affected, you know, sometimes you don't see that until their funeral. How the place showed up of people that knew people that knew him or her. How the lives that they've affected. Because you go through you don't realize what you're affected. It's not for you to. All you have to do is walk the way God wants you to walk. All you have to do is do the things he wants. And there's other people looking at you that you don't realize are looking at you. They see God in you. They can see the change in you. So all you have to do is trust in him and let him reach who he wants through you. Amen. I know I say amen a lot, but I'm trying to get, it's hard with these masks. I don't get no feedback. <laughs> uh, Sometimes I work better on feedback. My Lord. And when I don't get feedback, I just have to keep going until I get to you sometime. Amen, yeah. amen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to know that I'm reaching you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And sometimes it don't matter. I could be up here not reaching nobody, but it might be somebody out there on YouTube or Facebook that I'm meeting. It used to bother me that 
that's when I was young and I first started preaching and I didn't get no affirmation. And, and at one time I was near the end of my sermon, but I hadn't got there yet. But then uh, a couple of people got up and walked out. And it, and it almost bothered me so bad, I almost stopped. I'm like, wow, am I that bad? They get up and walk out? But I realized they were looking at their watch and their time for them was up. Their 30 minutes was up, so they was they were gone. Okay, <coughs> so then I have to realize that it's not about everybody. I can't save everybody. That's right. uh, everybody won't, won't come down, and somebody say again, you know. But just that one person. If I have one person come and say, Pastor, I heard what you had to say, mm -hmm. or that 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 sermon was for me. That's fine. Because I have sat here and listened to the Pastor preach or one of the other, and it didn't do nothing for me. But it wasn't for me at that time. Now, God reaches who he wants to reach when he wants to reach. And then there's other time I sat and listened, I'm like, well, who you been talking to? You been peeking in my window or somebody been telling you what's going on in my life? How, how do you know about that? You would forget. God knows everything. How can they know? How can the preacher know it? And if you ask him, well, well who do you been? He don't know what you're talking about. He just said what he got to say. I'm out there speaking the words that God gave me. If it reached somebody, Glory be to God. I don't know how and what I'm saying has reached you and which point it is you have. I don't know if you're just sitting up here waiting for me to be quiet so you can go home. I'm doing what God has asked me to do and trusting in him oh, yes. that someone is out there needs the word that he has to hear today. Amen? So if we realize that in our weakness, we have strength if we acknowledge that we have the weakness and we lean on God to get us through. If we realize that there is nothing that we can't do through Christ to strengthen us. And even though it says here, I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me, I also take it to mean that I can do nothing without Christ which strengthens. Amen. Amen. So as we go throughout our day, take time to examine yourself. Take time to look on your walk. Take time to realize that even though God has done great things with you and to you and through you, that there's more that he can do. That if you just lean more on him and trust in him and, and, and ask him for direction uh, before you start, you know anybody that ever just started out on, on a journey and then halfway through, then they ask direction? Because they don't figure it out halfway through that they're lost and don't know where they're going, where if they had got directions ahead of time, it, it would be all right. Mm -hmm. But you have to verify. Find out where you're going before you leave where you are. You may not know what direction God has for you unless you ask. How often do we start our day without direction? And then we wind up at the end of the day in some place and we wonder how we got where we are. You got there because you were just wandering around without direction. But if you have prayed for God for direction, then by the end of the day you can say, thank God I made it through where it was you had for me. And sometimes you may not be sure of where it is you're going, but you know you're trusting and you're leaning on him and wherever you end up is because that's where he had for you to be. So we thank you for this day. We thank God for this day. I thank each of you for the support that you have given me and the support that you've given to each other because we're not in this alone. We're not in this walk alone. We're not in this, this life alone. We're not in this church alone. We need each other to make it through, to, to do the things that God would have us to do. And just by being here, now you have something and you may have some direction that you didn't have when you woke up this morning. That you can share the word of God with someone else. And there are those maybe that have the opportunity to look on the Facebook, to look on YouTube, but there's others that have it. And just by the fact that you are here now, you can reach those other people each one of you can reach 10 to 15 people and, and, and multiply that by the 10 to 15 that's here, that's over 100 people that we can be reached. 
let alone the Facebook, YouTube, or whatever, uh, Twitter, or whatever else is there. Imagine how many people we reach on a daily basis just by walking that maybe we haven't personally talked to, but somebody was watching us. Somebody know you ever been somewhere, and then later on down the road, somebody said, hey, I heard you was over so-and-so. You didn't see them there. How they know where you was at? Somebody saw you and told them. Before I ever came to Christ, I got in trouble like that. Somebody see me being somewhere I wasn't supposed to be, went back and told them. Amen? And I don't find out, well, how did you find out? Don't worry about that. <laughs> I can't tell the story about it, I know. But how do we forget that everything we do, God is watching? God is watching. No doubt. You can't go in front of him and say, Lord, how did you know I was doing that? Because he knows you before you were even here. When you were still in the womb. When you leave here, he's still going to know you when you're in the grave. There's nothing you can do that he doesn't know about. And when we live our life accordingly and not worrying about it, if you're doing the right thing, you do what you're supposed to do, you don't worry about who see you and who don't. Amen. Amen. Because when they see you doing, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Or whether it is they know it or not. <clears throat> okay? That's up to God to say. I thank you for listening to this message. Would you please stand? There may be someone that maybe heard uh, something in this message <clears throat> that convict their heart. There may be someone out there that doesn't know Christ in the pardon of their sin. There may be someone that, that, that wants to, to recognize that they're a sinner and they've fallen short, glory to God. But it's easy as ABCA, admit that you're a sinner and fall short, glory to God. B, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, born of a virgin, came to the world in the flesh, suffered, bled, and died for our sins. Now sits at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. And see, confess him as your Lord and Savior, and you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for the word of God. Grace. Grace. God's grace. His grace is sufficient for you. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, grace, grace, God's grace, His grace will give you the victory. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for this service. We thank you, God, for the preaching of your word singing of Zion songs, the prayers that have been prayed. Now, Lord, as we prepare to leave this place but not your divine presence, we pray that you would go with us and preserve us. Keep us in your Holy Spirit until you come for us again. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name and the people of God sang together. Amen. Amen. Amen.